always wanted to be a soldier, and the way I realized it, uh, the more enemy I took out, uh, the less Americans died. There are lots of people who deserve the award. I am the lucky one. I'm alive to talk about it. But there are grieving mothers still whose sons were every bit as brave. The hero to me is the guy that gave everything he had his life to save somebody else. I don't like that I don't have him, and I do feel cheated, and I should be better, but it was done for the right reasons. There are children that have been born because of Jason, because their daddies came home. 1861, President Abraham Lincoln signs a bill authorizing the first Medal of Honor. The wording speaks to gallantry in action. And over the course of almost 150 years, the Medal of Honor has come to represent service above and beyond the call of duty. It would be President Truman who would often say to recipients that he would rather have a Medal of Honor than be president. According to legend, one recipient responded by saying, Sir, I would rather be president. And although it seems that modesty often replaces bravery over time, the recipients of this honor are, in a word, heroes. We were led to believe that uh, our freedom could be at stake. So I decided, well, if that's the case, then I need to be doing something about it, and I want to go in the Marine Corps. The place, Fairmont, West Virginia, the year 1943. The 17-year-old son of a dairy farmer, Herschel Woody Williams, was told he was too short for the Corps, but when the rules changed shortly thereafter, Woody enlisted. And at 18, he left the farm in West Virginia for San Diego. In the fall of 43, after I finished boot camp, we went through a phase of infantry-type training. And then in the fall, they shipped us overseas, and we went to Guadalcanal in July and August of 44. We went to Guam and took it back that the Japanese had taken from us. We stayed on Guam then and continued to train. So then in early February, they loaded us aboard ship, and it wasn't until we got aboard ship that we knew where we were going. Where they were going was Iwo Jima. It was February 21st, 1945. Fighting had started on the 20th. Woody and the others on board were told they probably wouldn't even get off the ship. Because we were the reserve division to two others, they didn't think they would ever need that many people and uh, that we'd be gone about five days, and then we'd probably turn right around and go back to Guam. They didn't turn back. They went ashore. Total chaos. There was just equipment everywhere that was blowed up and part of it sunk and stuff on the beaches that the Japanese had blown up with the mortars and the artillery and that stuff. There was just equipment everywhere. And there were a lot of Marines because they had no way of getting them off the island once they were killed. When we hit the sand trying to get up toward the first airfield, it was just like walking on BBs or marbles or loose corn. It just, very difficult to get any foothold. And we met in a big shell crater, uh, trying to get down below ground level, and the shell crater was deep enough that we could do that. And that's where Captain Beck was looking for ideas and very frustrated and for the number of men that he had lost. That's where he asked the question of me, did I think I could knock out some of those pillboxes? And as I've said many times, I have no idea what my response was. Uh, some of the other guys in the hole with me later said that my response was, I'll try. I don't know whether I said that or not. I probably did. This guy sounds like me. I, I might say that. Woody Williams did more than try. As his citation for the Medal of Honor reads, quote, he fought desperately for four hours under terrific enemy small arms fire and repeatedly returned to his own lines to prepare demolition charges and obtain serviced flamethrowers, 
struggling back, frequently to the rear of hostile emplacements to wipe out one position after another, end quote. There's some parts that are in my citation that I do not remember at all. Uh, and I'm sure it was a fear bug that took that away. I'm convinced of that. There are some that are so vivid that uh, they just never go away. They're just always there. And all I have to do is stop for a second, and there they are. I have to emphasize, I didn't do this alone because there were other Marines helping me. But I did use uh, six flamethrowers uh, over a period of four hours. I have been asked, and if you were to ask me, how did I do that? I have not the slightest idea. In the end, more than 6,800 Marines lost their lives on Iwo Jima. When the flag was raised over Mount Suribachi, it was day four of the exhausting and deadly 36-day battle. February 23, 1945. Another seven months would pass before Woody Williams would receive his Medal of Honor from President Truman on the White House lawn. I am so frightened. No one can understand. Maybe they can't. If they've ever been in a near auto accident or a near something that caused their body to shake, that's the way I was that day. When I got up to walk up there, my body began doing that, just like this. And he put the metal around my neck, and then he, now whether he did this to everybody or not, I do not know. But he put his left hand on my right shoulder, and I have always believed that it was to try to keep my body from jumping up and down, because that's exactly what it was doing. More than 60 years after the action, the memories of his fallen brothers are far from faded. The medal that I so proudly possess really belongs to them. They gave more than I did. They gave all they had. So when I wear it, I don't wear it for what I did. I was just doing a job for which I had been trained. But I wear it in their honor, not mine. And I just figure I'm, I'm the caretaker of it. I'm going to take care of it. But it's theirs. I was born in Columbus, Ohio during the Depression, in fact, the day the stock market crashed in 1929. And over the years, my mother had had 15 children, and uh, she was about to have another child. And uh, so me and my brother, because women make a lot of noise when they have babies, we got out of the house. And when we came back, uh, my sisters were out on the porch waving her arms. And when I got close, one of them said, Ron, Mama had twins. And I turned to my brother and said, there goes my place at the table. I'm a join in the Army. <laughs> Ron Rosser had already served for five years when his brother Richard was killed in action in Korea. That death would change Ron's life. My primary reasons for uh, going to Korea, just to finish his tour. And I insisted on combat, a combat assignment. When I arrived at my company, which was heavy mortar company. My company commander was going to assign me to the third platoon as a first gunner on a mortar. And I told him, I said, uh, Captain, I'm going up on line. He said, he said, uh, Rosser, I'm running this company. You're going where you're going where I tell you. I said, No, sir, Captain, I'm going on line. And he said, uh, Oh no, you're not. And I said, I can't think of a way you can stop me, Captain. <laughs> 